Good morning, guys. Today is my last day in Cambodia. I am currently in a restaurant for breakfast, and then I walk to the bus station where I will ride a bus for six or seven hours to Ho Chi Minh City. I think I'm going to, if I cannot find an overnight bus to my next destination, I'm going to find a hotel, sleep, wake up, and go to another location next to the ocean. Looks like there's a bit of exploring I can do over there as well. So, Cambodia. I'm happy that I came. I thought that if I, if I didn't come now, I probably wouldn't in the future because I've been in Vietnam for so long doing my thing over there, and then I'm off to America and then India. So if I skip Cambodia, I wouldn't just make a trip for Cambodia, I don't think. So I'm kind of happy that I did it, experienced the culture, soaked it all up. For those of you who don't know, my goal, I guess, I've determined, is to experience the culture, to understand the culture as I travel and determine which country I like the best. And it's strictly based on culture. And when I determine that, I will probably move there and make it my home. So that's my mission. Continue to search for the cultures around the world that fit me in the closest way possible. And when I find the right spot, I will attempt to learn the local language so I can kind of maneuver a little bit more. Anyway, I'm gonna eat breakfast and then it's off to the bus. I made it to the station. Apparently they're under construction just yesterday. I'm actually quite early. I couldn't make the restaurant last long enough, I guess. So I'm just gonna sit in the back and wait. Cool, so I just finally got dropped off after freezing to death on the bus for seven hours. They dropped me off pretty much right where I wanted to be dropped off, so I can go find one of millions of hotels around here. I'm gonna check the times and prices for the beach, and hopefully I can go tonight would be great, if not tomorrow morning. Scratch that idea, I'm gonna find a hotel. Unfortunately, the TV screen is down. I cannot look this place up. I don't have a SIM card, I don't have Wi-Fi because I'm in a different country and my old SIM is dead. Anyway, I must find a hotel, do my research tonight, and then just go in the morning, I guess. And you can't speak to them because they don't speak English and it's very little and they're very unfriendly, unkind. I've been there many times and no matter how many questions I ask, they're just, they just don't want to help no matter what. It's the, even if I translate on my phone, they just don't care. It's the weirdest thing. So anyway, try not to die, there's like a thousand buses. So I bought my ticket for tomorrow. The place is called Long Hai or Hai Long, I think Long Hai, I can't remember. Anyway, my bus leaves at 8.30 tomorrow morning. I could have went tonight, but unfortunately, the bus was leaving in like 20 minutes. I had to use the bathroom, I was hungry, plus I needed a SIM card for internet, and I would have arrived at like 8.30 at night, nine o'clock at night. It's difficult enough for me to get around during the daylight. Obviously, if you add darkness, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because obviously I don't speak Vietnamese. So anyway, right now, I'm eating dinner, egg and rice. She asked me what I wanted, I said egg and rice. She looked at me funny and she says, that's, that's it? I said, yeah. Everybody else usually gets rice and like there's many different meats, but the meat just does not look very good to me, so egg is okay. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning and welcome to Ho Chi Minh. It is about 7.15. I slept through both alarms. I don't know how that happened, but I did. But that's okay. I always give myself a lot of extra time just for those type of reasons. All I have to do is find breakfast really fast and my bus leaves at 8.30 and I'm off to the beach. So I found breakfast within, I don't know, eight seconds of walking from my hotel. It was right over here on Hoi Vinh Street. It's 20,000 Vietnam Dong for uh, a bin mi, which is basically a Vietnam sandwich. They're actually pretty good. So it's 7.45 in the morning. I'm looking for coffee before my bus leaves because I love the Vietnamese coffee here. Notice there's people behind me. It's a bar. It's a bar, cafe, kind of everything. And two foreigners are already into beer. <laughs> Either they didn't go to bed last night or they're up very, very early for uh, local beer. By the way, if you come to the tourist area, Hoi Vinh Street, my God, always, always rule number one, bring your earplugs. Last night, the music stopped outside, the loud boom, 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 you know, music, that music. The loud music stopped at 3.30 in the morning. No joke, 3.30 a.m. That's finally when it shut off because I kept waking up, thank God for my earplugs, and it, I, it was manageable. Without them, I would not have been able to sleep. But I remember waking up at 3.30, checking my phone, 
and the music was almost dead. I could hear one song playing outside. So it's super busy out on the streets. Apparently this is the, the street with so many tour companies, like one after another. Walking the streets, found coffee and these incredibly tiny chairs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. I take up four chairs for one person. It's basically 15,000, which is a little bit more than normal. It's usually right around 12, but I think it's because of the area that I'm in. I paid as low as 10 for the same thing in, in rural Vietnam, but average is about 12 anywhere you go. The most expensive, yeah, thank you. The most expensive I've ever paid was uh, about a dollar, so 23,000. Because it's an instant price drop from Cambodia. Cambodia, you cannot buy coffee for less than one dollar, and that's like almost everywhere I went. There was one place on the outskirts of Siem Reap, one of the village houses near the ocean. I stopped and talked to the man who was speaking French. I paid for my coffee, his beer, and an energy drink for a man, and it was like a dollar five cents, a dollar ten cents, something like that. Another reason why I don't like the tourist areas. Yesterday they said, I asked them, ah, is it a big bus or a small bus like the one behind me? They said, ah, it's a big bus. Well, he just told me now, yeah, it's going to be a small bus after I buy the ticket the next day. They initially said it was going to be almost 200,000. I said, that seems very, very high, and I explained why. He says, ah, okay, we'll give it for you for 150. So you have to negotiate. Then he said the bus was going to pick me up over there. Well, then we had to go on a motorbike to take me to another place to the bus. And then on top of all this, they said, uh, yep, the bus takes you directly to the city. Well, this morning, a different person says, no, no, it does not take you directly to the city. It takes you to a small town on the outside where you have to rent another motorbike to take you another 30 minutes to get to where you want to go, which none of this was explained to me yesterday. I feel like they just, they just tell you what you want to hear, so you buy the ticket, and then you actually find out later that all of the things they were talking about is not true, which gets very, very frustrating because you are no longer their problem after you are gone, after you leave. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, cool, thanks. Because once you're on the bus, you cannot complain. So it's very frustrating that they tell you the wrong information. And now I find out why because we're going through Futa Bus. So if you're coming to Vietnam, go to Futa Bus directly. It's the biggest name in Vietnam. If you go there directly, you will pay the normal price, the local price. So I did not know. I assumed that I had to go through the travel agency over there because it was going to be a different brand bus. Nope, so you pay them and then they pay Futa Bus and they keep the difference. So if you're watching this video, go to Futa Bus directly and you will pay the local price and do not go through a travel agent. As I was waiting for the bus, there's a big crowd waiting and waiting in the area and the, the people are getting upset and shouting and the bus is honking and I'm like, my God, hurry up and leave, hurry up and leave. And a man walks up to me and he says, let me see your ticket. And I showed him and he says, oh, you need to be on this bus, it's been waiting. I'm like, oh my God. So this whole time, all this anger was building because I was supposed to be on that bus and they were waiting and time was running out and people were getting upset. But the man before, he says, ah, next bus, next bus. So I was waiting for the next bus. I don't know, wow. it's just all the, wow. all the things, uh, awesome, thank you. All the things were adding up, not in my favor today. Well, one thing is in my favor, I guess, today. I'm at the back of the bus. He goes to every single person asking for the ticket, asking for the ticket to show that you're on the right bus and you paid. He's getting to me, I'm looking for my ticket, I don't have my ticket, then I realized that when I was rushed to get on the small bus at the other station, he looked at my ticket and kept my ticket, and so I didn't get my ticket. So basically, when I came all the way here, I cannot show him a ticket, but he asks everybody for the ticket, but when he gets to me, I just says, ah, I, I want to go to Long Hai, Long Hai. Um, and he says, okay, so he never asked for my ticket. He just assumes that I paid, assumed that I have everything. So had he asked, I don't know, maybe I would have been kicked off the bus. I don't know. Just the craziest series of events. This has never happened. Like in Vietnam, it is usually the easiest, most simple thing because they're very structured in Vietnam. But today, all the bad things that could go wrong, they went wrong. The, the woman says it goes to a different city outside, and then I have to rent a taxi to go to Long Hai. But I said, I want to go to Long Hai. He says, yeah, okay. So, I don't know. I don't know if the bus takes me there or not, so I, it could be an interesting thing. We'll, we'll see. So I'm following the destination on Google Maps. We just stopped in Baria to let some people off. I was going to get off, but they said, no, 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 stay on. 
because he told me earlier that we're going to Long Hai. Okay. But as I follow the maps, you can see we're taking the road to Meng Dao, which is not where I want to go. So basically I have to go all the way down here and then hire a taxi to bring my ass all the way back. But maybe I'll stay a day here just to see what there is. Maybe I'll like it more, I don't know. But in my head I wanted to go to the other place, so awesome Vietnam. Talk about confusion, so about one minute after I said that we're going to the wrong place, the bus stops. We get on another bus, a personal bus, that takes basically the people to their individual locations that they want to go. Mine was obviously the other place, Long, uh, Hai Long. Uh, so, thank you. And so he says, where do you want to go? So I told him, he brought me all the way to the town. And then I just said, drop me off at a coffee shop with Wi-Fi. So here I am hanging out at a coffee shop with Wi-Fi. So I'm just getting coffee, sitting, figuring out where I want to stay. You would think I would do this earlier, but it's more fun this way. <laughs> I'm crazy. Anyway, so coffee, hotel, and hopefully the beach. The good news is I found where I want to go. The bad news is it's about a one hour walk from here. And the taxi service app, Grab Bike, in the local area, apparently they're not here. They're not in this town. So. We walk. I'm assuming there will be people going by who honk their horn and say, hey, motorbike, and I'll say yes, and then I'll go. We'll see. If not, I get a tan. I'm walking and there's a random husband and wife sitting there having lunch, and he says, hey, and he puts his hand on his head, points to the sun, and he, he's like, he speaks something I don't understand. And I said, no, no, I said, it's okay, it's okay. I said, I like the sun, but I said it in Vietnamese. And he says, huh, he says, you like the sun? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes like this, he, he, he was under the tree and he goes, oh no, no, um, but this was all in Vietnamese and I thought, after it finished, I thought to myself, I was like, oh my god, I was speaking to him in Vietnamese, which is very strange. Who would have thought that I would come to Vietnam and learn little pieces of the language enough to communicate to someone in simple conversation? Weird. I'm learning. Well, I've almost walked the full hour just a minute ago. A man asked me if I wanted to ride on a motorcycle, but I'm already almost here. Unfortunately, my phone shows the 4G network, but it will not connect. I cannot load any applications, which is very frustrating because I just bought it yesterday. I don't know what the deal is. I've restarted my phone twice and, and nothing seems to work. I don't know if it's just a glitch with internet, which is weird, or there's a problem with the, the SIM card because I spent almost $15 on it, which is very expensive for the area, but I wanted it, so hopefully it'll connect. But for now, I just walk and I don't remember the name of the hotel that I plan on going to so this is uh, this will be an interesting journey once again so I'm definitely back in Vietnam Vietnam prices for food coffee this morning was 15,000 which is maybe 60 cents and I just had a whole meal plate full of rice a little bit of soup a whole pile of meat and vegetables all that was about a dollar and ten cents compared to every the cheapest place I could find in Phnom Penh it would be minimum of two dollars and fifty cents and that is the cheap cheap places so a man maybe my age stopped on a motorbike next to me he says hey you want to ride and basically he took me from from the restaurant to here which was a one minute ride on the motorbike but I completely appreciated it because I'm, I'm getting pretty tired but it's, it's at the temple, he's meeting his friend at the temple, so he dropped me off. It's here on the ocean, so I can see myself coming here quite frequently in the next day or two. I'm hoping to find a cheap hotel. Obviously, when you come to places like this, it's more expensive. A lot of places are 500,000 and up, which is about 25, 23 dollars and, and higher, which obviously is a, is a cheap price when we compare it to the West but in Vietnam it's a very expensive hotel and obviously there's some that are well over a million per night. Yeah, I'm all about cheap because I usually am never in my hotel. It's a place to keep my bags so I can go out and explore so I always get the cheap places. My hotel should be right over there and I'm gonna walk there and hopefully I can come back but my phone is dead and my camera is almost dead. Anyway, let's go to the hotel. The hotels here are actually quite beautiful. They're insanely white. I don't know how, so windy, I don't know how well you can see but they sure are beautiful. <laughs> it's interesting because I'm sure when I get to my hotel, it's gonna be this old rundown piece of junk. That's, uh, that's usually where I stay. Again, the fun is on the outside, the boring is on the inside, so why would I pay a lot of money to sleep? So I stopped at another coffee shop. I told them I did, I did not want the third coffee for the day and they have orange juice, so 
going to order I ordered orange juice but the reason I stopped is I went to talk to a local and say what is the cheapest hotel in the area and see if they know it's kind of a, a shot in the dark a gamble I suppose so I'm curious to see if they know I think this place itself is a hotel many places along this street are just hotel 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 very few of them actually list the price on the internet so um, or they just don't come up at all so I'm hoping that there's many places that are even cheaper than what I found online well that didn't work out she doesn't know she said to check Google <laughs> so I think the place is just right over there the cheapest place I could find on Google didn't have the best reviews but the reviews were like bad food and I don't care because I'm going to eat outside anyway but the cool thing about Vietnam is they always make fresh orange juice so literally she was probably in there squeezing oranges to make this for me and it's amazing it's so much better than the crap that you buy in America so cheers to uh, natural so let me give you the grand tour we have the the entrance the living room the grand television and the bathroom I actually have an ocean view I don't know if you can see very well but it's pretty cool we communicated 100% through body language this whole process it was pretty cool even the price it was a little bit cheaper than what I seen on the internet so it's an honest place in terms of he could have charged me the prices on the internet because usually if you purchase through a website they keep a commission and then so the company makes a little bit less but he gave me the at cost price which is a little bit less than the internet which is cool so sometimes they don't do that but he was very nice very kind very polite and there's a rooftop just one story up um, and I can sit there and watch the sunset so I will happily do that other than that yeah I just feel like literally collapsing <laughs> there's so much editing I must do but part of me wants to go to the beach also so I don't know what I'm gonna do welcome back so I laid down for a second and well I guess I fell asleep because now it's dark I can see the Sun has set maybe 20 minutes ago because I can still see a little red over there now I'm out on a mission to find some dinner where I don't know ah there we go here I think but I seen a restaurant a minute ago but nobody was yeah see it's completely empty so I don't know if it has not started yet or if they are already finished I would say already finished so it's kind of weird because it's only like six o'clock I think hello it's 6 30 Brock what's your name <laughs> uh, that's like a wedding I don't know so I guess I'm just going to walk farther and see if I can find dinner no matter where I go everything is closed everybody's like sweeping the floor shutting their doors turning off their lights there's like nothing it looks like I'm going to have to eat at a convenience store tonight and get like random stuff yeah it's like 6 30 like what town in what country anywhere in the world closes at 6 30. usually at night vietnam is like an explosion everybody comes outside because it's been so hot everybody's inside now it's night and everybody comes out but apparently not uh not here so i walked all the way to the beach where i was earlier there's a lot of food stalls but everything is seafood the smell is horrible because everything is freshly caught sitting in water and it just it really smells unpleasant here and I'm not a big seafood guy so yikes um, I was hoping just to find rice and I'm looking at the sign but uh, hey there's rice maybe I don't know maybe I can just get rice with uh, no seafood I think I'm gonna call it a night tomorrow I think I'm going to wake up early do a little bit more research of where I'm at and uh, figure out uh, what I want to do. I think I just want to head to the beach and enjoy the sun and the water. Thailand was the last time I was at the ocean or swimming or anything, I think. I can't remember, so, and that's been a year ago. So. Anyway, I'm gonna end it now. Thank you for watching. Remember, your time is running out. Start living. Take care.